and they won here three weeks ago so it's obviously going to be a very tough match for the fulfillment factory monarchs tonight they're a very solid side and uh, a real uh, danger man at reserve is the young Aussie Joel Parsons who joined them recently. Joel, uh, you, you've done very well since you joined uh, Hull. I must admit I was absolutely amazed that Rye House didn't put you in their team this year. Was there any particular reason why they didn't? Well, uh, last year at the end of the year Len said that I, could, I was in the team at Rye House and uh, when I got here he was, was a little bit worried about my knee injury that I uh, sustained last year at the end of the year at Sheffield and uh, I told him that I'd been training hard in Australia, which I was, and I worked hard and... Uh, come back here and I found out I wasn't so after you know after a month or two into the season I wasn't doing any riding I thought well I'm around the other side of the world to race speedway over here you know mm. and I said to Len I said if you can't fit me in I've got to try and find Premier League and uh, you know he was he was a bit iffy about it you know he didn't know what to say he didn't know what to do and uh, I found the spot at Hull I'd done a trial meeting with him I got about seven points or something so they were happy with me and I'd done another one at Hull and got nine or ten and uh, mm. So they, they said, we want you straight away. And I said to Len that, you know, Hull are after me now. And he said, well, I can't let you go. And went on for about two weeks. And he just said, well, it's up to you now after the two weeks. And I just said, well, are you going to put me in? He said, I can't, you know, I've, I've got really good boys. They're going well. So I said, I want to leave then. I want to go and, and get a Premier League. So, uh, you know, that's how it came about. And now I've been with them. I've, I'm scoring some points and I'm really happy. So yeah. it's good. Well, in particular, you, you proved Len wrong by getting 11 paid 12 in uh, Hull's window in there. Did that uh, make you quite happy? Well, it did, you know, before the meeting I was quite nervous, and uh, but I was keyed up as well to do well in front of everyone there, and, you know, I did have a good match there, and, uh, you know, 11 paid 12 I was really happy with, and, uh, you know, I think I think Len was a bit spitty afterwards, mm. but, uh, you know, it's the way it goes, and I'm just happy to be with Hull, and they're doing well, so, mm. uh, you know, it'd be good to finish the league this year on top, and, uh, you know, it's my second season, and... Uh, yeah. You know, so that's what we're looking for. Mm. So have you stopped riding for the Rye House Conference team? No, I'm still a Conference League rider and Len's bringing me in as a guest Sunday mm -hmm. at Rye House for the Rockets. So, uh, you know, we got we got a couple of tough matches this weekend for him. And, uh, you know, I just I can go, I want to go there and score the same amount of points, you know, because uh, I want to show the fans and Len that I could have done it there, you know. Mm. Now, the whole team is going very well. And I know Eric Bukok's already said to me that he doesn't want to be called a title contender, but you must feel that you are one of the best sides around. Well, we're strong throughout the whole team, you know, the whole team scores points, so uh, that's what you need in a team, from one to seven, all scoring points, and, you know, that's what we've got now, so, you know, we just got to keep it going and keep winning. Mm -hmm. And you obviously have won here already, so you must feel you've got at least a chance of winning again tonight. I think all the boys tonight are fairly confident, I know I feel fairly good, uh, you know, it's, it's um, well, you know, we're all chasing for it, and all the boys here, we just all sort of stay cool, and we're good as a team, and... Uh, you know, we've all got a bit of confidence in our heads, so you know it's good. It's good to get confidence, and, and you've got to just keep it. That's it. Yeah. And uh, Matt Weathers' dad tells me that you raced against Matt quite a bit back in Aussie. Yeah, I did a bit of racing against Matt, you know, but I didn't have my good equipment out there in Australia this year, so it wasn't as good a season. But uh, I'm going to try and take back some decent equipment this year, and uh, you know, put a challenge out there in Australia as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that sounds like our starting music, so I suppose we better let you go, but uh, it's good to see you going so well, and it's about time you got a Premier League place, I would have said. That's it, no worries. Thank well, a very good evening to you, and welcome to another EMTV Rewind, and a special request this week. This is a bonus episode, um, a Tuesday night episode, Tapes Up Tuesday, uh, and we're going to go back to 2004 and the Premier League when Hull Vikings came calling. My name is Liam Rudden. And I'm John McGilvery. Well, after winning our first league title in 2003, we had to reconstruct for the start of the 2004 season and the unlucky rider to leave was Magnus Carlsen. We did retain our star heat leader trio of Short, Carr and Schlein and with Theo Piper plus young Aussies Matthew Weathers and Cameron Woodward, we still had a formidable side. However, Hull came to Armadale and won in the Premier Trophy, so when they returned in the league in June with former Monarchs Ross Brady and Magnus Carlson, we were looking for revenge. For Edinburgh that night then, at number one it was Freddie Short, and at two Theo Piper, at three Peter Carr, four Cameron Woodward, at five Rory Slime, at six Matthew Weathers and at seven Tobias Johansson. Neil. Thanks John and yes there were a couple of familiar faces in the Vikings lineup that night. At number one Paul Thorpe came in, at number two it was Ross Brady, three was Magnus Carlson with Emil Kramer at four, at five it was Gary Stead, Joe Parsons was six and Emiliano Sanchez came in at number seven. So now without further ado let's head over to Mike Hunter and let's go racing. Number one then of what we expect to be a very tight match is Paul Thorpe going from gate one. Gate 2, Freddie Short. That's the two team captains. Gate 3 is Ross Brady, and in Gate 4 it's Theo Piper. Paul 
thought was away quickly there and he has got to the front and Brady's there too. Pretty shot. It's a wee bit untidy there going down the back straight and he's dropped back to third spot but he's tucked into the line to try and squirt his way up. Three abreast as they hit the first corner second time round and Short has gone through. Brilliant riding by Freddie Short. Piper's there as well. Well Short used that inside line to perfection there. And Piper's pressing Thorpe very hard. And Brady's in amongst them too. This looks like a great opening race. Thorpe is at the back now and Piper's through into third spot. Well remember the Vikings were in a 5-1 position and they could lose both. Piper coming hard inside Brady. When Ross was a monarch he never used to ride the inside but he took a very nice inside line there and he'll probably need to do the same on this last corner to make sure of second spot, which he has done. That was a tremendous opening race which went from a visiting 5-1 to a home 4-2 in the end. And a nice ride by Ross Brady to make sure he hung on to that point but terrific effort by Freddie Schott to squeeze his way through on the first lap. <laughs> Gate two then, Matthew Weathers is the man on gate one here. Gate two is Joel Parsons, both these two are Aussies. Gate three is Monarch's new Swedish signing, Tobias Johansson. And in gate four it's Emiliano Sanchez. One of his bike doesn't sound too clever, but uh, Johansson certainly made a stirring start and he's gone ahead. His partner Matthew Weathers has been pushed to the back. Tobias going well. He's got uh, both the visiting riders on his tail, pushing hard. Weathers has dropped a very disappointing distance behind. He's usually very competitive. Johansson very wide there, and Parks has gone under him like a train. That was a bit disappointing, he went too wide, but he's not losing any further position at the moment. Rather slow into the turns, perhaps, the Swede. Here comes uh, Weathers trying hard. Johansson trying to hold his position here. He may lose it though, I think. He has. Sanchez has gone through as well. And in the end, Johansson finishes pointless as it turned out. So, uh, well, we did hear he was a good gator and didn't always hold position. And that's exactly what happened there. But it was a ride not without promise. Uh, there will be many weaker reserve pairings come round than uh, the Hull pair, but they've done the job there and got their 5-1. Gate number three, Magnus Carlsen is on gate one this time. Gate two is Cameron Woodward. He's been showing improved form recently, but this will be a tough match for all the Monarchs' uh, lower-end riders, to be honest. In gate three, it's Emil Kramer, a very handy Swede, and in gate four, Peter Carr. That's a rough first corner. Magnus Carlsen leads, but Peter Carr's got him under pressure. Whoa, no room against the fence there. Woodward and Kramer battling for that third place point and Kramer just about getting through there I think. So the Vikings again showing that they're made of tough stuff. Woodward a big wide sweep again, nicing with the fence. Carr trying to find that inside line to peg back Magnus Carlsen. Carlsen knows exactly what to expect and he's covering that line. Woodward again blasting around the outside. just can't find the room on the inside. Woodward just can't find the room on the outside, although Kramer lifted quite badly there. And Woodward may have got him this time with a big sweep again. Oh my goodness, what terrible luck for Woodward. He was definitely through into third spot there and the bike came to a halt. Well, that is very, very unfortunate. And this is precisely the night that Edinburgh don't need any of that kind of luck. So they've lost another 4-2 there and they've dropped four points behind. Just kept his nose in front and then he probably saw it. Our 
Norwich line, a problem at the start, he's had to switch to Freddie Short's machine. It's uh, not an unknown feature of Rory to have problems when he arrives at the gate, I don't know why that should be. So this is heat four with Emiliano Sanchez going from gate number one. Gate two is Tobias Johansson, Gary Stead in gate three, and Rory Schlein on Freddie Short's machine is in gate four. Gary Stead and Jim Syme have had uh, problems before. Lines made the start on that unfamiliar machine and here's Tobias coming into position as well. What can he get to? He's into third but he didn't manage to get himself round uh, Sanchez there. Gary Stead's come a cropper. Johansson's having a go at Sanchez. Sanchez is looking quick and putting Schlein under trouble. And the race has stopped because Gary Stead's bike's still on the track. Probably managed to switch machines there in spite of a bit of a heart attack from Alec Harkas, who thought the time was running out. So Rory's back on his own machine this time, so it's Sanchez gate one against Johansson gate two and Schlein gate four. And Johansson's made a better start this time. Can he get himself in front of uh, Sanchez for four laps this time? Sanchez passed him in heat two. Sanchez swinging wide. Johansson's bound to have learnt something from his first ride, although he's looking somewhat unsteady there. Kind of wobbly to put it mildly. He got round the bend somehow. Leans it over there. Looking a bit better there. Sanchez can be so brilliant and so disappointing. All in the same meeting. No problems for Schlein. His bike seems to be carrying him round okay. And Johansson has just a lap to do to level up the scores for Edinburgh if he can avoid a mistake. There's no way Sanchez will catch him if he doesn't do anything wrong. He's a bit wide there. He's going to hit the fence. He has. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was awfully disappointing. What a poor effort. He only had to ride a steady bend. He nearly off the track there. But he got the third. Well, it's his first point for the Monarchs, but it should have been two. then Peter Carr, Ross Brady, Cameron Woodward and Paul Thorpe. And Carr's got to the front. Where's Woodward going to finish up here? He's got himself ahead of Thorpe. He beat Thorpe down at Hull. In fact, here comes Brady around the outside of Carr and he's gone round him. Carr will have to work hard to get back ahead here. And Brady doing very well. Tremendous riding by the local youngster. Carr again pushing for that inside line this time. Brilliant work by Brady and he's on the faster line. But Carr of course can be so irresistible sometimes on the inside line. And we might be seeing that here. We might be. No we're not. 
Red has got through again. Brady would make a mistake if he turned too tight, I think. Cameron Woodrow's got that third spot, but Peter Carr's not going to get the victory because Ross Brady's ridden an absolutely brilliant race. A superb three for uh, Brady, but a single point for Cameron Woodward, which was very well won. So Brady maintains the lead for uh, the Vikings with a terrific ride, one of the best rides we've seen from him here since his days as a monarch. Very impressive indeed. Gary Stead has gate one here. Eight two tail piper. Joe Parsons in gate three and Freddie Shock comes from gate four. And this is certainly the pairing that Edinburgh looked to for some heat advantages, but Piper's been caught around the first bend in spite of a good start by the very lively Joe Parsons. Shot clear. Parsons remembers the man that Rye House didn't want to have in their side and transferred to Hull. And he's getting himself quite comfortably clear of Tail Piper. And even though Paul Thorpe hasn't scored a point yet and Gary Stead hasn't scored a point yet, all this will do for Edinburgh's level of scores if they finish where they are. Dead looks well and truly out of sorts there. If they've got Parsons and Sanchez to cover for them, they're probably okay. Very shot a rather haywire last corner, but he gets the win very easily. And the Monarchs level the scores, but I'm sure they were hoping to do a little bit better than that in that race. And as I say, Stead and Thorpe haven't got a point yet, but the scores are still level. Seven then Rory Schlein on gate one, Magnus Carlsen gate two, Matthew Weathers in gate three, and Emil Kramer rides from gate four. Schlein and Carlson hit the bend. Kramer's there too. Kramer's on a very interesting line, but Schlein gets to the front. Carlson comes through. Once again, as in heat two, Weathers has lost an enormous amount of ground on that first corner. And Morris need a contribution from Weathers. Now he's finding his feet and closing in on Kramer, who should have been beaten by Woodward first time out. Carlson looking quite threatening in second, and Weathers seems to have a chance against Kramer as they hit the pits corner. Final lap. Not much time for Weathers now. He'll battle to the finish. Here he goes for a big blast, Matthew Weathers, but got that well wrong. Not in the hunt, really, so the scores stay level with a shared race there and every point's going to be vital tonight. Two wins out of two for Rory Schlein and Magnus Carlson's colours lowers there. Key number eight then, Tobias Johansson gets his third shot going from the inside gate. Gate two is Emiliano Sanchez. Gate three with a fair bit of responsibility here as usual, Theo Piper. And in gate four, in sparkling form so far, Ross Brady. Brady's away very well and Piper untidy there. He's got himself into second, I think. Johansson's at the back this time. He hasn't made that stunning start as he did in his first two and he's away he are there so a rather 
Well, it looks as though Hull are going to take the lead here. Peter Carr couldn't pass Brady. Until Piper does, he'll be a hero. He's certainly going well there. Almost got onto Brady's back wheel. Johansson's lost a lot of ground this time. I don't think his bike's quite functioning correctly. Well, Hull take the lead again with a 4-2 there. And Tobias Johansson dribbling along a long way behind. So uh, Ross Bray's only dropped one after three rides and Hull are certainly looking as threatening as we thought they would. Nine men, Woodward, Stead, Carr and Parsons. Carr's away well, but still Stead this time. He hasn't got a point yet. And Cameron Woodward has uh, lost a lot of ground there. I'm sure the Monarchs were targeting this one as an advantage. They don't seem to be able to reach their potential in any race. Woodward's got himself onto Parsons' tail now. Two Aussies. Woodward will try that big blast around the outside. He is good at it. Here he goes again. He's just losing too much going in. He can't quite make it up on the way out. Once again, a big blast by Cameron Woodward. A very big blast, and I think he got it there. I think he might have snatched it on the line. I'm pretty sure he did. A very, very brave move again. He's been making those moves all season, and sometimes they come off. I think it did that time. So he's probably leveled the scores. Key number 10 then, Tio Piper rides from gate one. This is his final ride. He must make it count. Gate 2 is Emil Kramer, who hasn't really looked all that comfortable to my mind. Gate 3 is Freddie Schott, and Gate 4, Magnus Carlsen. Carlsen, an excellent start, but Schott has taken him wide there. Schott really making that first bend count. But in spite of Carlsen hitting the fence, Theo Piper is still at the back. He's driven in very hard there, but Carlson's up around his corner. Piper always seems to get a point less than the Monarchs must be hoping for in every race, and that means nothing in this one. He's pushing, but he's not going fast enough. He's got to catch Kramer. Shots miles in front, having really dealt harshly with Magnus Carlsen on that first lap. Kramer's not riding very steadily, but he's got a huge advantage over Piper, who's now stopped altogether. Very, very disappointing performance by Piper. Monarch's strongest second string, achieving absolutely nothing there. So the scores stay level, and the forthcoming heats don't look so good in the second string department for the Monarchs. Gate 11 then, a tough one. Ross Brady on gate 1, Rory Schlein in gate 2, Paul Thorpe gate 3, and Matthew Weathers rides from gate 4. Line lifts there, and it's Brady who's made the start. Here comes Weathers, my goodness, and Schlein a brilliant first corner. Weathers rode a great first turn too. Schlein went to the front, Weathers almost got into second. He's back at the back again, he'll have to go around that wide route once more. And just too much for Matthew. Strong pairing for the visiting side. Well, a lovely first corner, though, by the Aussie Schlein to catch the faster gating. Weathers very nearly got into second, and from there he might have managed something. But Paul Thorpe came back under him again. The Monarchs tail enders are finding this match very, very hard. 
Swain, a quite glorious ride. Superb victory, his third of the night. And the score stay level. Then Joe Parsons, Peter Carr, Magnus Carlson, and Tobias Johansson on gate four. Carlson's made the start, and Parsons goes with him. And Carr's going to have to work hard to get into second, which he has done. He's come steaming onto the inside line, where he likes to be. Can he possibly catch Carlson? He really didn't get away well. He's turned it backwards there. And he's right on the line he likes to be on, and he squirts it hard down the straight. Carlson again knows what's coming here, and Carr's moved him over, I think, this time. He has. Roll. What a tough pass by Peter Carr. That was absolutely ferocious. Carr's absolutely got the bit between his teeth there, absolutely screaming along. Well, Carr and Short have given Carlson some really tough racing. And Magnus... I think Muir was coming. What a ride by Peter Carr. He's absolutely scorching there. He's determined to keep the Monarchs in the hunt. That was a glorious effort. And Magnus must have thought they had the win there when he got ahead and he'd beaten Peter already. But uh, absolutely no standing on ceremony from Peter Carr there. Just absolutely roaring past. Freddie Shot gate one, Paul Thorpe on gate two, Rory Schlein gate three, and Gary Steads on gate four. Shot leads the way, the rain coming down now, and Schlein has got into second. Gary Stead comes through to third. How will the rain affect things, I wonder? There's two more races after this one. It's probably not heavy enough to have made a difference yet. This will put Monarchs one point up on aggregate for the bonus, but they've got a very tough heat to face in heat 14. Final lap here. Short wins for the fourth time. Schlein says unbeaten as well. A comfortable 5-1 and the Monarchs go four ahead. Well, he's number 13, Arsenal, with Ronald Robinson being 
14 then with the sun starting to shine and the weather, the rain seeming to have eased off. This one will be viewed with some trepidation by the Monarchs fans. I think it's Emil Kramer riding from gate one. It's Matthew Weathers in gate two with just a single point gained in heat two. Way off form, Matthew. Gate three is Emiliano Sanchez. And gate four with some brave riding but some poor gating, Cameron Woodward. Visitors who've gated by far better there. Woodward threw into third. He's the right man to be challenging here, I think, but he's going to be tough. The Vikings look as though they'll level it up for the last race. Woodward trying to find space, but there certainly isn't much. Sanchez may have left Kramer a bit there. No such problems now, I don't think. Edinburgh have struggled with Heat 14 all season, and nothing's changing. Woodward, a big blast there, that was impressive. Back on their tail again, if he gets this one right, he could be in the hunt. Here comes Woodward. He's close as they get to the final corner. He's having another go. He's locked up, I think. He tried hard, but the 5-1 has gone the way of the Vikings, so we're level going into the last race. So it'll be all on that one. Monarchs could still get the bonus, but uh, they'll need a 5-1. And uh, that will be a tall order. Well, it's level, and the Vikings boys did what they wanted there. Well, then, let me just jump in here to remind you that John and I will be back with another Sunday lunch uh, this weekend. If you have any questions or shout-outs you'd like during the show, you can email us, John and Liam at edinburghmonarchs.co.uk. That's John and Liam at edinburghmonarchs.co.uk. John. Yeah, thanks, Liam, and thanks, as always, to What The Fork, the team sponsor for 2020. A reminder as well that you can still get your face coverings online. You'll be needing them from Thursday, uh, so check out edinburghmonarchs.co.uk for them. As Liam says, we'll be back on Sunday with Sunday lunch, and we're also back on Friday for another EMTV Rewind. It's Berwick from July 2012. So, enjoy Heat 15. This meeting is finally poised at 42 each and hull up three points on aggregates. Enjoy Heat 15 and as always, stay safe. Well, everything's up for grabs in this heat, number 15. Tonight's winner will be the winner of this heat. With the bonus point hull lead by three, it's Magnus Carlsen, Rory Slane, Australian, Freddie Shaw. And the visitors are away best. Carlsen and Brady lead the way. They're on a 5-1. They won the toss and took gates one and three. Monarch's looking for a miracle now. Schlein turns it backwards there. But he's nowhere. Carlson on the inside, Brady on the outside. They're not under pressure at the moment. Shot has got into striking distance around the outside. He's locked up. The two unbeaten marks are both losing the record here. And Hall are going home. The winners again. 43-47. Hull win the match. Too many mistakes by Edinburgh. They left it to the last race once again. And there was no way back. Shot and Schlein couldn't do the job that time. And the second home defeat in three matches for Edinburgh. No arguments. The two ex-Edinburgh riders did it in the last race. And Edinburgh just don't seem to be able to get things right around Armadale at the moment. So for the second time this season it's Hull who have got on the victory parade and that's three home defeats in four weeks for Edinburgh an unprecedented uh, 
run of disaster for the Monarchs and understandably and perfectly acceptably Hull look very very pleased on the truck they've done extremely well uh, very good uh, display and Ross Brady and Magnus Carlsen finished the job in great style there in the last race too much pressure on the Monarchs heat leaders any point they drop these days uh, exposes the weaknesses lower down the side I'm afraid the home side scorers, Freddie shot 13 from 5, 4 wins and then unfortunately a third in the last race. Teo Piper, another very disappointing performance, the Monarchs are really looking to him as the senior second string and 4 from 4 just isn't enough points. Peter Carr really uh, went well in his last couple of rides, 10 from 4, tremendous efforts by the motor. Cameron Woodward, 3 and 1. Uh, from four and no, certainly no complaints about Cameron's efforts. Rory Schlein got 11 and one from five again like shot unbeaten in his first four. Matthew Weller is very disappointing one from four and Tobias Johansson also I'm afraid a disappointing debut in spite of a couple of decent gates he got one from four as well. For Hull Paul Thorpe only got one and one from four didn't seem to matter. Ross Brady got 13 from five outstanding. Magnus Carson 11 and one from five exceptional display. Emil Kramer, 5 and 3 from 4. I felt he might have been vulnerable, but he got the points. Gary Stead, just 3 from 4. Joel Parsons, 6 and 1 from 4. Very handy points. And Emiliano Sanchez, 8 and 1 from 4. Again, crucial contribution from reserve. That's their second away win because they won at Rye House as well. So Hull, very definitely uh, contenders for honours this season. They've won by 47 points to 43 and the only consolation for Edinburgh is that they're not back this season unless we meet them in the playoffs. That's it then. Good night from Armadale. Joined by Vital Hull Vikings rider Ross Brady. Ross, a great result for your team tonight. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think anyone in the team really expected to win here again after the first time, but um, it just shows you, you know, uh, got all the boys pulled together tonight and um, we done it and me and Man Magnus managed to pull off a, a great heat 15. Yeah. Obviously, the last time you um, managed to win, but your own, your own personal performance wasn't dazzling, but you still managed a few points tonight. You were sensational. Aye, the last time I think I got nine or something like that, but um, you know I'm enjoying it now, and uh, you know I'm just trying to keep it going every meeting I can. Yeah, obviously, you moved into the main body of the team. Last time you were reserve, how are you finding that change? Yeah, much better. I mean, I, I hated riding at reserve, and uh, you know I'm, I'm just happy to be in the team now. Yeah. You came back to Edinburgh. That's two two defeats, as you said. You've inflicted on us. You obviously like riding the Armadale track, seeing you using your old outside line right around Peter Carr for the shot, Rory Slain. Not many guys have beat all three of them. Yeah, that's it. It's always hard here, you know, because like you say, Peter, Freddie and Rory, they're, they're on the gas round there and, um, you know, I just managed to have a few good rides. Yep, yep. We've seen your name in the street. We started doubling up with um, Swindon last week at Peterborough and um, one of your old tracks again. It was good to go down there and get some elite league experience. Yeah, it was good. I managed to win a race and uh, unfortunately I blew my engine in my third one. So, uh, but never mind. Hopefully I can get a few more. And the rest of the season, Hull Vikings definitely going for the league title. I'm saying nothing. Huh? Thanks for talking to us, Ross. To ask, um, how was your debut for Edinburgh? No, it was not too good. <laughs> it's starting good, but I, I, I not to uh, find the line in the track, and uh, uh, it was difficult for me. So you were looking good in your second race, and until I fall in the last bend, so you were getting to grips with the track, okay, at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna say, but uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, too slick, and uh, I go out in the fence and. Uh, yeah, I hate the fans. <laughs> it was not so good. So, I don't know. <laughs> the track, the track, you find the track quite tight. Bellevue's quite tight. Have you found it riding the home track at Kirky Lane? Yeah, yeah, the track is good when you find the line. It's, an, it's a good track because uh, it's not so hard turns. It's a really round if you see any other tracks. It's a hard turn, so I feel great at the track. But was find the line in the track and, uh, and find the uh, red setups in uh, the bike, so I feel, feel it's okay with that. You're looking forward to riding the Premier League now, a step down from the Elite League? Yeah, it's better for me because it's too hard for me to get in the Elite League, so uh, uh, it's better for me to get the Premier League. So. I understand you had a good meeting in Sweden on Tuesday night, qualified for the Swedish final? Yeah. Uh, on Wednesday was it? Wednesday, sorry. Yeah, yeah it was a good meeting and uh, I have a meeting yesterday and uh, it was also a good meeting. So I'm going better in Sweden now, so <laughs> I must find it set up here. So yeah, I think it's going good here also. All right, well, thanks for talking to us, Tobias, and we'll see you next week.